Hello and welcome to the July update from the Townnet team. And you're here with me, Fola. And without further ado, let's get into your Q&A questions. All right. And the first question is from Dana. And he asks, what is bounded look back? And are there any plans for what can be done to deal with potential state explosion? Yeah. So thank you for the question. The, the bounded look back is a property of a tau formula or respectively um, of a tau program. And it can be explained as follows. So if the program, if you want the program to output something at time t, then the, the tau program has looked back k if this output at time t can depend on the previous k outputs or inputs. All right. And the next question is from Rebellion. And they ask, hi, tau team. It's been a great journey so far, I would say. But where do you see the Townnet project in general in the next one, five, and 10 years from now? Thank you very much for that question, Rebellion. In a year's time, I do expect us all to be much more familiar with Tau language and the testnet itself. And I expect adoption and usability to have increased and people to be much more aware of um, uh, Townnet and the testnet in general. So much wider adoption just of the whole project in, in a more general sense. Um, in five years time, for sure, there'll be more applications uh, available over um, testnet, mainnet, wherever at that point. I'm sure we'll probably be at mainnet at that point. But, um, you know, much stronger rules in the system, um, much more robust system, much stronger foundations that you guys will be playing with and in control of. Um, and again, much wider adoption and usability, uh, adding things like the controlled natural language portion, uh, being able to write and describe software uh, in just logical sentences. Um, and that again, increasing the adoption of the whole test net or town net. And in 10 years time, that's a very, very challenging thing to predict, but I can also say that um, there are gonna be applications that I don't think any of us could think of today. Um, so I think, think about the box, size of the box and then think far beyond that box. And that's where, that's where I think we'll be in 10 years time. Cheers. And the next question is from Sir Andrew. Welcome back. In the recent Tau language demo of temporal values, we have I for inputs and O for outputs. When using custom names for variables and formulas, how do we distinguish input from output? Thank you for your question, Sir Andrew. The idea is to bind input-output variables to input-output streams, understanding by a stream the same as in CPP. For example, we will be able to bind the input variable keyboard to a standard input and the output variable console to the standard output. Of course, the streams are not restricted to such simple ideas as in C++, they could be files, sockets, and so on. And the next question is from Dana. I looked at the formula for embedded execution. Phi of x sub n is defined as e of x sub n. And it is said that GSS OTC programs can speak about themselves. What are the implications of this? Yeah, the, this embedded uh, execution is, uh, is subsumed by the much, much better uh, pointwise revision. The idea of uh, pointwise revision um, is a mechanism for software updates. So um, uh, they bear this in mind to the answers uh, to the next questions. So it uh, allows an update without um, updating everything, without having to specify the whole program from scratch, but only the part that you want to change. This uh, software update also um, covers the idea of uh, giving commands to, to a robot, giving commands to the system, and that this is what embedded execution uh, um, historically intended to do. But now that we have a point by revision, we have a much better approach. All right, amazing. Thank you very much, Ahad. And the next question from Dana is, GSS OTC will need an extra logical engine. Is this the same as an execution engine for program execution? Yes, there is only one engine, which is the, the interpreter, the program that runs Tau programs. And Tau is the brand name to the, <clears throat> to the generic name GSS OTC. All right, amazing. And Dana, back again, a couple of questions from you this month. We love that. The next question is, does your implementation of two variable fragment make use of press burger arithmetic? 
I saw a paper to variable logic with ultimately periodic counting 2020, which showed this. And no, we don't go in this direction. All righty. And the next question is from Dana. In Taba, chapter 10, there is a description of a star type. What is this? Yes, a star type is from the terminology of the literature of uh, the two variable fragment. I can see in papers by uh, Jan Pat Hartmann about the two variable fragment uh, with counting, um, how he defines star type. And it is uh, quite a niche a term uh, used as far as I know, only, only in this subject. Amazing. And the next question is from Ron, and they ask, can we just state what we want to buy and sell on our profile and have it automatically trade with anyone on Townet? Uh, yes, exactly. That's the beauty of Townet because it's based on logical AI and supports reasoning. It can pretty much uh, understand what you have as resources over the network, be it computational resources or knowledge. And um, yeah, it can automatically match your needs with other users' needs um, to tailor deals automatically. Yeah, And even more than that, um, even without you having um, directly articulated what you need, um, Tau will be able to indirectly infer uh, from your worldview what uh, you may need and it can um, without you even having um, directly expressed what you need, it can uh, understand what you want and what you need. All right, fantastic. Thanks, Killian. And the next question is from Dana. And he asks, Luca, what can you tell us about proof of execution and the current best practices for scaling peer-to-peer -peer computation? Yes, thank you for the question, Dana. So proof of execution uh, is the term we used for the idea uh, to use an interactive proof protocol uh, called the SumCheck protocol um, to efficiently verify BDD computations within a BDD library across a distributed system. And now regarding best practices for scaling peer-to-peer -peer computation. So the main point is that if you want to scale peer-to-peer -peer computation, a node doing a computation needs to be able to produce a verifiable proof that his or her computation is correct. And this proof needs um, to be shorter than the actual computation um, in order to be scalable. And for this reason, any computation which allows an efficient um, proof that can be verified uh, can be scaled in such a computing network effectively. All right, thank you, Dana, for that question. And thank you, Luca, for answering that. And the next question from Dana is, I had last month, you said that you have a way to extend Tau language to reason about peer-to-peer -peer computer networks. Will we see something like Zenit built using Tau language? I still don't have a way. I'm uh, nowadays working on a way. Now, so specifically for Zenit, Zenit is a very simple design. And of course, you will be able to implement a Zenit. Um, in the current uh, design of Tau. This next two questions are from DN and Dana. TauNet manages new rule updates over time. Since Psi needs agreement, is there any preferred mechanism for such consensus? I understand that it will be defined by the users eventually. And to follow on from Dana's question, he asks, I studied the Genesis diagram. Will TauNet be using proof of execution and will proof of work or proof of state consensus be needed to validate or confirm a transaction or rule proposal? So I wanted to answer them in the same breath because I think uh, they're kind of uh, related even though the answers uh, is different. So for the first uh, question regarding uh, the uh, Tau agreement, um, the Tau runtime itself has a logical function that allows, allows it to find the agreement between uh, multiple opinions uh, that are expressed as logical formulas. So that's kind of a deterministic uh, process. However, uh, the, to answer your second question, which is uh, regarding the blockchain agreement uh, or consensus, um, that, that's more of a classical uh, blockchain uh, mechanism, and it would either be proof of stake or proof of uh, work. Uh, however, most likely uh, it'll be proof of stake in a first uh, iteration, but you're also correct in saying that 
uh, over the long term, uh, we will leave it up to the community to uh, decide what it, what it needs to be because, uh, of course, uh, Tau is a user-controlled uh, blockchain. I think you understood that already. I hope that answers uh, your questions. And the next question from Dana is, will Taunet with the initial Genesis diagram give us the prerequisites for a smart constitution? And is pointwise revision key to this? Yes, it's all about all about a smart constitution and a pointwise revision, as I said before, it's um, a way to update only a part of the, let's say, constitution and not having to specify the whole thing all the time. And the next question is from Hui Lin, and they ask, how much coins are in the treasury account and have the team sold any of them? So the team aren't selling tokens purposefully. This is something that I've addressed on Telegram multiple times, and I want to say that again. Now, what you guys ask for are exchanges. You will ask for when tier one, when Binance, when KuCoin and so on. And to get on exchanges, we also need to make sure that they are maintained. So when we list on an exchange, tokens don't just come out of nowhere and then they're available to purchase. So that we make sure that treasury is always used for the community's benefit. This is what we've always said. So um, we, through third parties, ensure that the exchange trading requirements are being met. They are strict. And if we didn't make sure that these are being met, we would be delisted. And we do not want that. So the exchange treasury amount does oscillate, it does grow, it does decrease over time. It will never be exact same number, um, but we, we have to have this because otherwise you guys would have nowhere to trade. And we make sure that these uh, trading occurs in the right avenues. We wanna make sure that um, trading occurs in regulated jurisdictions because we are a, 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 a token that is classified as a uh, technically classified as a token that doesn't require regulation, but we would also call this a utility token, at least in the uh, European and Asia markets. Um, so yeah, I uh, hope that answers your question. Again, um, we're not purposefully selling tokens. The treasury does oscillate and up and down over time. Cheers. And the next question is from Moore. And they ask, question regarding token emissions from the treasury. Can the team give such an indication about how many emissions there are from the treasury per month or year? Okay, so at first I wanna clarify the word emissions. On the website it says there are no emissions from the token. Now to clarify the word emissions, we're not saying that there aren't gonna be any emissions from the treasury. We mean in terms of the token itself. So there are 42 million tokens in total. That's all there will be for us right now, unless you guys, when you get the controls of uh, uh, the Agoras token on mainnet, want to increase or decrease the token, emissions typically relate to uh, the uh, 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 growth or the decrease of the total supply. So right now in our hands, there will only be 42 million tokens unless you guys change things when it's out of our hands. Now, in terms of the emissions, um, <laughs> there are none because we're not increasing the token supply. Um, but in terms of the treasury movements, we do have to maintain exchanges, as I said on the previous question. Um, we have to make sure that we are flexible in terms of making sure that partnerships can happen and occur. So yeah, the, the, the treasury does increase and decrease. We are going to make sure that the circulating supply is updated. Um, and uh, we find we, we need to find a way which is uh, as clean as simple as possible and simple as possible uh, for everyone to be able to just track um, the uh, the updated circulating supply. So we're going to do that, and um, uh, but we're not going to be releasing the, um, the 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 company wallets again for security purposes, for privacy purposes. We want to make the project as flexible and as nimble as possible. And having things like every single trade or transaction ultimately scrutinized, uh, that's nothing. That's something that we don't want to do. That's, something, that's not an idea that we subscribe to. Um, but again, every single thing we have ever done for the token and for the project has always been with the community's best interests at heart. For example, the exchanges. So um, yeah, I hope that answers your question and onwards we go.
The next question is from Logical Bullish, and they ask, what will be the first use case after releasing the product beta? Are you already in touch with some major enterprises for sharing knowledge and resources? So with the new website, we are going to be launching our Build on Townet program, just like any other project would, we want to attract other projects to utilize the Townet blockchain and find use in real decentralization. As I said before on Telegram, if you, do, if you truly want to be decentralized and seen as a decentralized project, you're going to need Townet. It's as simple as that. So that's one of our big sales and uh, upsells for projects who want to be uh, considered decentralized in a decentralized space. Um, the first use case I would see is just being able to control a blockchain um, by describing what you think it should be. Um, the first user controlled blockchain is really the first initial use case. And the next question is from Dosky. Welcome back. And they ask, hi, Tao team. Do you have any plans to list Agoras on Binance or Coinbase? Just to let you know, these kind of questions is what leads to us having to use the treasury. I'll let Killian ask this question. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, yes, of course, uh, exchanges like Coinbase and Binance are kind of like the holy grail of the centralized exchanges. Um, so definitely that's a long-standing goal. Um, obviously, it's not that you go from zero to getting listed on Binance or Coinbase. It's a long way um, that is accompanied by us releasing our products and getting more widespread adoption. And over time, hopefully, uh, we will get listed on these exchanges. All right. Thank you so much, Dusky, for asking that question. And thank you so much, Killian, for answering. And the next question is from Sir Andrew. What is the connection between Tau Meta Language and Tau Language? For now, we use um, the parts um, of TML in order to uh, use building blocks in the implementation of the Tau Language. The Tau Language has um, many of the abilities that uh, TML does, uh, in particular over a fixed uh, universe. Uh, the, the Tau Language can do anything that TML does. And we will see in the future how uh, how this connection will grow, but uh, for now it's, uh, again, uh, only for, for taking uh, code parts from TML, and, um, and Tau can already do a lot of the things that TML can do. All right, incredible. Thank you so much, Ahad. And the next question is from Dave, and he asks, how is the progress of the other patents? Over to you, Karim. Thank you, Fola. Yes, as uh, you well know, uh, we have been filing some patents uh, to around uh, the Tau language and other implementations. We have uh, recently filed uh, two related patents, one, or basically the same patent, both in um, both with the USPTO and uh, with the European Patent Office. Uh, and those applications uh, are just uh, fresh in. Obviously, they haven't been. Um, examined by the uh, by either patent office, but uh, they will uh, soon enough. Hope that answers your question. Thanks. And the last question is from Sir Andrew, and he asks, how is the progress of implementation for a good algorithm for two variable fragment with counting? Thank you for the question, Sir Andrew. Um, so since we are working full force on the release at the moment, I'm also fully occupied by this um, endeavor. And for this reason, the two variable fragment with counting uh, will, I think, uh, be explored after the Tau Alpha release is ready. Uh, but until then, uh, there's no intention of starting uh, the implementation. All right, fantastic. Thank you to all of you for tuning in, asking questions, and thank you to the team for getting them answered. We'll see you on Telegram. Cheers.